in their little lap of honour. This is Joe Barry Customs, John. Doc's covered, sir. Is there anything else you want? What's the procedure for the trucks? Their bills are checked as they come onto the dock. They pull under the grid to receive the containers. Yours will be the third down from the ship. And she's on time. Jaws to control. Subject 2 is pulling off A13 into a picnic area. We can't go with them. May West to control. Subject 1. Same picnic area, same problem. Here, boss. It's got to be the meat to show the merchandise. And the money. Control to team. Can you see a blue transit? May West to control, yes. Transit parked in picnic area, both subject vehicles stopping by it. Joseph Control taking a left, 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 trying to get round the back of them. Left, 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 same direction, Jaws in front. Can we get around now? We don't know she's there, sir. Well, where else would she be? We can't do it now. We haven't got enough in there. Luke's got three on his own. And we'd lose Arango. He'll deny the ship. That isn't the point, is it? He'll also deny the abduction is anything to do with him, and so will Luck. And they're sitting there with a transit full of banknotes. And they'll deny them, too. If we go in now, we'll lose the operation. We put the hostage at risk and four of our team. With respect, sir, I think it would be wrong. And Karen? I think it would be wrong. John, by the time we get the support we need, they'll have moved on. What can you give us? What do you want? I need control. We're in trees about 300 yards from a picnic area. I can see them. There's the transit, subject one's Merc, subject two's hire car. They're looking into the back of the transit, at the money, I guess. They're talking. Subject one's walking away. It's coming back. They're arguing. Fox to Barney. Can you see Maria? Uh, yes. She's in the transit. Passenger seat. Leaning forward. She's still. Can you see if she's all right? No, I can't. She's not moving. Subject still arguing. Subject one's gone away again. Now he's coming back. He's shaking hands with subject two. They've done the deal. They're returning to their vehicles. Fox to Barney. Maria, can you see Maria? She's still on the passenger. She looked up. She turned as the Chinese got out of the van. She's okay. Subject two's gone to her. He's pulling her out of the van. Oh, Christ. Get him in there, Ruby. Wait a minute. They're arguing. Subject two shoved her back into the van. They're getting back into their vehicle. They're moving on. They're pulling out of the picnic area. All to control, we're pulling out. We need backup. We've lost the dark. We're too exposed. Where are the Essex boys? I'll get them around them. Box of the bull. Switch subjects. Stay back. We'll get you back up as soon as we can. Stay with them. And if they split, take the transit. She's alive. Now what? Just to control with subject two. Direction Tilbury. Ship's in. Mayweather to control. Subject one, subject two, and blue transit, 200 yards ahead of us. We're about half a mile from the dock. Control May West, your port east. They're left, left, left into a warehouse, 200 yards ahead of us. Understood. Somewhere here, sir. Outside Port Authority. That's where they made the exchange, isn't it? Mm. We let them take the truck off the dock. Mr. Berry, can you pick it up for us when it leaves here? Yes, sir. Right, we'll take it when it gets to the warehouse. Come on. Sir. to shut the door. Miss Chang. The principals are inside with the money. Jack Silver's looking at the back of the building. Customs and uniforms are further down. Anyone see Karen? No. That one's yours. Chris here, Johnny Carner, down there. Who's the driver? 
He's clean. Local firm. Jaws control. Driver's taken a call on a mobile. Understood. Stay with him. He may not know what he's carrying. Pablo to control. Subject one is out of the building using a mobile. Was he talking to the driver? Control at Jaws. Driver's still talking. Jaws control. Yes, yes. So what's he up to? He's telling Arango he's arrived. We haven't got much time. All right, Peter. You take Johnny down to the warehouse and find a way in through the back. I'm Chrissy. Yeah. Um, and tell him that I was a bit unfair, will you? How long has he been there? Since they arrived. Could be a problem. Blue to control in position at the back of the warehouse. Control the blue, understood. Where's the backup? Standing by, sir. Here's the truck. Columbium's out. Come to check his merchandise. They're closing up. We'll go in round the side. You're going to be happy. You're going to be very happy. Get him down, get him down. I want to get back and watch the telly. I haven't forgotten about you, little flyboy. Don't think you can fly me, will you? Stand by. Charlie. Excuse me. I'm from the Tilbury Docks Authority. Piss off. What did you say? I said piss off, Tart. Excuse me, I'm from the Tilbury Docks Authority. You heard me, slag. Out. Get lost. Cast you. Me. Get you out of this. Oh. Strike. Strike. Yeah. How are you going to drive? Piss off. Why don't we give you a driver? You've got the gun. We'll give you a driver. But you think I'm a tosser? You! Bastard! Come here. Hey, hey, Benny. Drive, man. Come here! Is it me? You done me. Are you come here? No, man. I can't drive it, man. I'm falling apart, man. Come here, you bastard! Stay down, stay where you are! 
You! Don't move! The Columbian, Charlie! You! Slowly, keep your hands up! This way. Right. Turn round, face the truck. Think. It's all right. Nothing all right. No sé qué está pasando. ¿Quién es el camión? Nadie me dijo. Soy sargento detective y morir de caso. Lo que está pasando es que te hemos trincado. Este camión es tuyo. Es soy yo la que te lo digo. Pure coca paste Madonnas. 400. Good. Very good. No, John. Excellent. Bloody excellent. Congratulations. was the final of NCS Manhunt for now. In a moment, a look at the powerful drama of Red Cap premiering next week. Then stay with us as the team from MI5 are tracking a hitman in the final of Spooks. Yes, sir. Well, you can stop acting. Oh, oh. You're back in uniform, Corporal. I didn't ask to come here, but I'm not going away. So don't think you can just freeze me out because I'm staying. Depends if she decides to stop acting like a one-man army. One-woman army, sir. A brand new series begins with a movie-length episode. Red Cap, next Friday. This Sunday on Compass, a giant leap of faith that propelled men into the heavens. This baby is really gone. For the astronauts of the Apollo missions, seeing our world in space was a profound experience which would change their lives forever. When we see ourselves from the cosmic point of view, a shift takes place in your perception. You can blot out your whole existence with something the size of the palm of your hand. Rocket Men, Sunday on Compass. Allegri Miserere. Sacred choral music to soothe and enchant the senses. The wondrous music of Allegri Miserere. Available now from ABC Shops, ABC Centres, retailers and online. For nail-biting BFL action, tune into ABC this weekend for live coverage of the preliminary finals. At 1 o'clock on Saturday, Sandringham go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a determined Box Hill. Then at 2 o'clock Sunday, catch the clash between Williamstown and Port Melbourne. BFL Finals Football on ABC. Good evening. At least 10 Iraqi security officers have been killed and five injured by American soldiers in the town of Fallujah, west of Baghdad. Fallujah police were believed to have been chasing four men in a car near an American checkpoint. U.S. troops reportedly opened fire when both groups failed to stop. It's the second so-called friendly fire attack in a matter of days. Four men have been charged over a record haul of pseudoephedrine in Sydney with an estimated street value of over a billion dollars. 750 kilograms of the drug was concealed in a shipment of wall plaques from Thailand. The container was seized by customs last week. 
Two girls aged three and four are recovering in an Adelaide hospital from cannabis poisoning. Police say the children ate food laced with the drug and had inhaled cannabis smoke. A man and a woman who were caring for them at the time has been charged with endangering the girls' lives. And country music singer Johnny Cash has died at a hospital in Nashville, Tennessee. His manager says he died from complications due to diabetes and had recently been treated for a stomach ailment. Cash was 71. Now a look at tomorrow's national weather. Windy with showers developing for Melbourne, Hobart and Adelaide. A morning shower or two in Perth and Darwin, mainly fine in the other capitals. Late line, 11 o'clock. Enjoy your evening. The war for independence was entering a sinister new phase. In the clammy swamplands of the South, British redcoats would face the kind of terror that American soldiers were to encounter in Vietnam 200 years later. And the war would be fought with brutal savagery. French against British, white against black, brother against brother. For slaves like David George, the war brought the hope of liberation. Rebels and Redcoats, 7.30 Sunday. It took me a long time to get over the survivor guilt. When you lose one of your own, when you lose your flesh and blood, it changes you. You're a different human being. Closure, mate, the closure that everyone's looking for. Some closure takes longer than others, I suppose. I've got none. You're a different person now? I try and be more positive, happier. Debbie Whitmont reports, Four Corners, 8.30 Monday. If you've missed enough road, you've missed Claudia Carvin, Jim Carrey, Heath Ledger, Paul Hogan, Rebecca Gibney, Rove McManus, Barry Humphreys, Russell Crowe and Catherine Kim, just to name a few. Don't miss the next revealing interviews, 9.30 Monday. May 16, 1943. A squadron of bombers took on a top secret mission. This night is the culmination of one man's grand experiment. Theirs was the flight of the Dam Busters. This is the true story of the ingenious mission that crippled Hitler's war machine. On their second run, they got it right. Using secret footage, recreations, and interviews with the men who were there. Ready. Bomb's gone. Everything was gone. It was a terrific sight. Dam Busters, 8.30 Wednesday, ABC. <laughs> The following program, Spooks, is rated M for mature audiences. It contains violence. I heard about what happened in there. I'm concerned about my emotional state. I'm acting CIA liaison. Is there anything I can do? If you speak to him, tell him I said hello. Hey, stranger. Hey. You look tired. You look great. End it. I don't care how, I do care when. The next time I see you, you're a single man. I'm worried by what I'm seeing. Monday, a revealing and candid interview with Jermaine Greer. Life's too short. This is what I think. And I'm setting it out like this. Being a woman, it's still the case that you can't make things happen very easily. You were married briefly in 1968, weren't you? Was that when it happened? Yeah. <laughs> in three weeks of marriage, it's true to say I was unfaithful seven times. Plus, one-on-one -on -one with UK songster Billy Bragg. Enough road, 9.30 Monday. At the risk of being shallow. <laughs> you nailed it. There's no water left in the pool with you. Fair <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, if you're a swimming pool, there'd be so many people in wheelchairs diving in. You. <laughs> <laughs> you're no. so shallow. <laughs> you don't need to be a deep thinker. The Fat, Tuesday after Foreign Correspondent. You've been waiting for this very moment. Hello, you. Welcome back, Carter. Don't you look terrific? The suburban nightmares are back. Don't you have that? It's pill sticky dust. In a brand new series. Well, that sounds eyebrow. With brand new issues. Oh, I'm very excited. No, Kim. I can't see you right now. Let's have a power. But still the same old Kim. Don't look at me like that, Mum. It's all you can eat. Kath and Kim. You're a psycho, Mum. The new series premieres 8.30 Thursday. The original cult classic. Just the beginning. The Doctor. Just open the doors, Dr. Foreman. Hey, Doctor Who, what are you talking about? The Fourth Dimension. The TARDIS can go anywhere. TARDIS. The Daleks. Exterminate! Exterminate! 
Exterminate! Exterminate! It's really scary. Your tone suggests ridicule. Back to where it all began. Six o'clock, Monday to Thursday. The following program, The Glass House, is rated M for mature audiences. It contains adult themes and material that may offend some viewers. Ahead in The Glass House, truth, justice and the American way. Hey George, is it true you're only a part-time president and your real job is running a company supplying body bags to the US military? Uh, you know, look, in my line of work... <laughs> It's always best to produce results. program that asked the question, if comedy equals tragedy plus time, did you hear the one about the twin towers that went down on each other? <laughs> if you're a member of Al Qaeda, did you get yesterday off? <laughs> More news than Osama's home movies around this week, but one of my favourite stories comes from right here in the deadly country. Prince Harry's coming to Australia for a working holiday, and so bodyguards can keep track of him they're going to fit the royal blood nut with a surveillance microchip. <laughs> ah, the irony. If there'd been a similar chip in James Hewitt, Harry wouldn't have been fathered in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the chip in a mobile phone. If Harry goes missing, just contact the palace and they can switch him off so no one else can use him. <laughs> the chip will be connected to a small LED light. If that light goes red, Harry's in danger. If his eyes go red, Harry's stoned. <laughs> Harry is coming here for his gap year between high school and university, where he really doesn't have anything to do. After that, he'll begin the gap rest of his life. <laughs> Australian taxpayers face a bill of, this is true, bill of more than $600,000 to help protect the little royal fella. Fair enough, though. We don't have a great record when it comes to looking after British backpackers. <laughs> from the big top Cirque de Willet. <laughs> Under new European Union safety rules, jugglers, tightrope walkers and other circus acrobats have been told to start wearing hard hats. <laughs> With helmets on, trapeze artists will go from human eagles bravely defying gravity to looking like bike couriers in leotards. <laughs> and it's not just hard hats. They're also demanding, before the lion tamers are allowed in the ring, Full safety instructions must be tattooed on all the lines. <laughs> <laughs> These new rules also have implications for street performers. Fire eaters will no longer be allowed to eat fire. They'll have to suck on really warm towels. <laughs> <laughs> but who wants to see performances that are all safe and protected? When someone's on the tightrope, you're not thinking, oh, I hope he makes it. You're thinking, oh, how hard would I need to blow to make him fall off? <laughs> Thank you. Pretty angry. Angry? Pretty angry. Pretty angry. angry. Just found out no. that the Howard government since they've been in power in the last seven years has spent $665 million on bloody ads. What the hell's that all about? That's 1.8 million bucks a week. That's $285,000 a day. How much that is an hour, I don't know. Because I haven't spent enough money on education. <laughs> For all our bloody ads. Rubbish. Seriously. Seriously, though, and you know how they've had doing that. They had 200 million bucks they spent on advertising for the GST. So it was a tax. They advertised a tax. So they had to collect the money to pay for the advertising for the tax. It sounds pretty much stupid to me. <laughs> Now, you know the one they've got at the moment? They've got bloody Dr. James Wright doing an oh, ad yeah. for bloody drugs. Mm. He's telling people not to go overboard on prescription drugs. It's the doctors who are prescribing the drugs. <laughs> if it's a doctor who prescribes me bloody, you know, heroin, I'm going to have a crack at it. <laughs> that 
attack the doctors, bloody hell. And James Wright, what's going on there? He should have died with the midday show. <laughs> Let's get to it. Joining me, Grin and Dave, for Rose and Stones in the glass house tonight from play school, from grassroots, from that dark place under your bed, Reese Muldoon. Hey, buddy. Yeah, you can sit down. There you go. And from Nova FM in Melbourne, that tray chic lady about town, Michelle Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, movers and shakers. First up, according to a survey of 850 office technology managers around the world, losing access to their email would be more traumatic than a minor car accident or getting a divorce. <laughs> I'm not surprised email has let me see far more women naked than any breakup has. <laughs> Email is so critical, 68% of the managers said employees started freaking out after just 30 minutes without it. So they need to check email more often than they need to smoke. That just isn't healthy. At least smoking gets you out in the fresh air. <laughs> but it's true, we rely on email for our well-being. If I personally don't get 150 emails every day telling me how to increase the size of my breasts, I feel very lonely. <laughs> Green, you obviously feel very lonely. Could you live without your email? <laughs> I could live without you, Emma. Um, yes, I think I could live without email. It wouldn't be the end of my life. But I think I would find it slightly inconvenient because then I would have to start talking to people again. <laughs> the beauty of email is you can talk to someone or you cannot talk to someone. Now, I'm married and I would hate to become divorced. It would be awful. But if that happened, I could meet someone on the internet. And if I yeah. pretended to be young enough, I could get heaps of presents and, you know, before anyone caught on. Do <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't really do much email myself. No. No. No? Why, why, don't, why, don't, why don't you, Emma? Well, I, I've got a computer at home. I've got, an in, I've got a, like a laptop. And I was excited to have my laptop. And then within one day, it was infected by porn. <laughs> jumps on your computer. Yeah. But, I mean, I looked up a couple of simple porn sites. Just to... Yeah, seriously. So, so you typed in simple porn. <laughs> oh, what simple porn? Is there some guy there going, ha, oh, I'm Forrest Hump. <laughs> oh, talk, you know how they make up titles of porno movies mm, based yeah. on other films? Yeah, Can yeah. I tell you my favourite? It's based on an, a, a, quite an old film. Mm. But uh, the new title is Splendour in the Arse. Oh. I, I, Edward, could... I prefer Edward Penis Hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lawrence of Alabia. Oh. 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 Nice. <laughs> Call me a traditionalist, but I like Debbie Does Dallas. Right? Well, you are so old. I'm old, so old. Yeah. It's retro. Okay, Dave, so you accidentally found your way onto a couple of yeah. porn sites. Well, well, there was yeah. a little bit of purpose involved. Initially, yeah. but then purpose. I turned the computer off and come to it the next day and turn my computer on. And lo and behold, it goes straight to where I was the day before. And I try to tap in and go, no, not here now. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to do normal stuff for a while. <laughs> you are so... Talk to you later. You tried to call a taxi and you give are, it 20 bucks. You are not go off the computer. And well, I'm not, well, I'm not calling a repairman around. <laughs> You're going to think I'm sick. <laughs> I'll tell you what, simple porn, if you love simple porn, and with your experience on play school. Yeah. Oh, God. Don't think. <laughs> Just stop right could... there, buddy. Stop right there. That, those two things, you should never hear those no, two things no. in the same sentence. It's just... Do you have to sign a clause or something when enemy. you do play school to say that you won't sort of, you know, talk about simple porn on television <laughs> or anything like that? What if there's some yeah. kids watching right now who see you in the mornings and think you're a nice exactly. guy? Exactly. I'd just like to say, yucky mucky nappy yucky <laughs> I'll be going, splendour in the yussy, yussy, yussy. <laughs> Our next movers and shakers are the teens and 20-somethings of Australia who are expected to spend about $20 million this year downloading ringtones to their mobile phones. Yes, people are spending $20 million a year just to make their favourite tunes annoying. <laughs> the ideal song for a ringtone is something that sounds good for about 10 seconds which explains the popularity of J-Lo, Nickelback and Avril Lavigne. <laughs> and it's going to get worse. Stereo ringtones are coming. What's next? 5.1 Dolby surround sound? Every time your phone rings, you're going to think M&M's rehearsing in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Michelle, you've had Slim Shady in your pants. Oh. Do ringtones fill you with joy, mate? I don't, I, don't, I don't change mine a lot. I've got, um, my ringtone is uh, that AHA uh -huh song, Take On Me. Oh, yeah. yeah. not apologising for that. But it's, it's a very cheery tune. Yeah. Don't look at me, don't shake your head at me, Hughie. No, well, it's an it's old a, song and it's in. But it's cheery. Does it have the... Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. So what happens is, even if I get bad news, and then I get off the phone, I think, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Cheery again. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, what can I tell you about my ringtone, yeah. which I, just, I got What's given a phone recently, which I was pretty happy about, and it had some cool ringtones on it, but the coolest one I found is, it's, it's the ringtone of an old phone, like a phone that, you know... Oh, that, yeah, I've heard know, this. Yeah, 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 like a normal ringing yeah, phone. Yeah. It is so retro. It is so <laughs> now. I mean, retro. <laughs> yeah, and, and was your computer made out of wood? Yeah. <laughs> no, wouldn't you love that? Wouldn't you, Corinne, love that as your ringtone? What's your ringtone, Corinne? Mine's the one the phone came with. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, because, real. No, no, I don't like... I don't what like... tune is that? Club Nokia? No. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's the least annoying thing on there. I, I hate I mobile. Oh, well, that's a bit annoying. No, I, 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 well, the other ones go, you know, I do that. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Corinne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a bit annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's the least annoying thing on there. I hate mobile. Well, the other ones go, you know, I do that. Do, 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 Jenny on the Block is That's number one, number which one? is a sad indictment of the youth of this country, I think. But uh, number four is uh, the Mission Impossible theme. And I've got a theory about this. Yeah. The Mission Impossible theme can come in at any time, right? So even with another piece of music, for example, if it was just, um, name a song, any song, whatever, you know. Yeah, uh, what's the song? It's uh, the National Anthem. National Anthem? Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. So it goes... Australians, all oh, let us rejoice, for we are dun 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 with them, and this is true. Do you remember this? It was walking down the corridor, and one, she had like this team of bodyguards, and one of their phones rang, and the bodyguard had dun dun yeah, dun. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just like, yeah. you tool. Oh, <laughs> Seriously, that's like Shane Warne having I touch myself. <laughs> Godfather theme is their thing, and of course, it's all the ultimate way to hear a beautiful song, isn't it? That yeah. You think, oh, gangster. <laughs> well, now I have different ones. No, seriously, I have different ones for different, because you can program your phone to different categories. But wait, you so, like, when, when my best friends ring, yeah, it's the A ring. team. Oh. Right. And, and when my parents ring, it's we are family. Oh. <laughs> like, that's all programmed. Oh. Like, it's true. Yeah. You are so yeah. sad. Do you know what, what yours is when you ring me, though? It's actually the number one song on that thing because I think of you as Rini from the block. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. So when you ring me up, it goes... Dun, 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 dun. And I'm like, oh, it's so what, is what, is it, what, is it, what is it when I ring you? It's um, Liam Lynch's whatever. <laughs> Who goes private caller? Like, who who sends their number? I send my number. Call. I, I send my number. You're a private caller. Yeah, I don't know how to send private, private caller. I hate private I won't answer them. No, I don't I won't answer them. I hate when you I'll just go uppity, Mr. Secretive, bloody up, you know. To who? Straight to the message bank for you. Yeah. The weird thing is, I'll get back to you in my private time. And Big Ted's going, where? Yeah. Well, you know, you know the thing is that this is so I can't believe I've, I've already told you the rest. Why not? When mine rings a private caller, it has "Private Dancer" by T. Oh. <laughs> you know, you're not nearly I, as busy I, as I, I thought you were. Yeah. You've got a lot of time. When was the last time you heard my whatever song on your phone? You don't ring me a lot, do you? Yeah. <laughs> now you know why, Will. <laughs> But our favourite mover and shaker this week is a Brazilian man who went to the doctor suffering from ear trouble and ended up mistakenly undergoing a vasectomy. <laughs> <laughs> Valdemar de Moraes went to a clinic suffering from muffled hearing, thought his name was called and went into a consulting room where a doctor was performing vasectomies. When the doc started working on his scrotum, he just thought he was adjusting the base. <laughs> But imagine how the guy who wanted the vasectomy must have felt. 
when the doctor he saw told him the problem was being caused by a build-up of wax in his ears. <laughs> Reese, you're a man's man. Are you scared of going to the doctor, mate? <laughs> well, in Brazil. Uh, but see, I mean, I think he should have, uh, you know, sort of cottoned on a bit sort of earlier. With, you know, like, I mean, if he, he's going into a sort of ear, throat and ball sack specialist. You know? <laughs> I, think, I think he's deaf and stupid, and it's probably a good idea those genes are being passed on. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you mean to trust your doctor, though? Aren't no, you really? I went to the doctor and he was like, doing the thing that they always do. I, this is doctor's thing for every guy, problem a guy ever has. And this is why guys don't know. They just go, well, it might feel your nuts a bit. <laughs> I've, never, I've never had a doctor feel my nuts, though. Really? What's wrong with me? <laughs> well, my doctor seriously had, he, he had his hands on, uh, like, Cold Joy and the Joy Boys. And he had them down there and honestly looked at me and I went, so what was it like meeting Nicole Kidman? <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I think that he takes your balls and goes, you know, you're a very handsome man. <laughs> I don't know about always trusting your doctor, because that, that, that implies that they're That's gods. a problem right there, because most doctors are junkies anyway. We all know that. <laughs> they're just doing their little Come surgery. On. Bam, bam, yeah, what do you want? <laughs> Come in, ears, balls, I don't give a shit. Just come in. Come, come, come. Doctors who won't touch your balls, Dave, because they're just on. <laughs> the opinions of Reese are not necessarily the opinions of the program. <laughs> right, I, mean, I, don't, I don't go to the doctor anyway. I mean, what's the point of going to the doctor, you know? You're a healthy specimen. Yeah, it's only having bad news. <laughs> Everyone knows there's something wrong with you, isn't it? I got, there must be things wrong with me. That's, I don't want to know. It's such a guy's attitude. Like, that's why only men are pirates. Only men would go, oh, my leg's busted. Just whack some wood there. Yeah. Shoot me right. I think you should take your car to a mechanic. They're going to find something wrong with it, so they bloody get some money, aren't they? Doctors are exactly the same. <laughs> There's something wrong with your arm. You're going to have to leave that with us. We'll give you a loan. Are you going to have checkups? Because we have to go and have checkups once a year. And yeah, all that. You have your bits checked, don't you? You want to have your bits checked as well? Uh, I check my own bits. Well. <laughs> Remember the Brazilian guy who got the accidental vasectomy we were talking about a while ago? Well, he finally went back to the clinic for the ear check he failed to get the first time. And he says he's really happy with the boob job. Later in the glass house, Brendan Nelson is mystified about Australia winning an award for excellence in education. I didn't uh, know that uh, it had been organised and uh, I said we didn't have anything to do with it. Arnold Schwarzenegger steps up his aggressive campaign for governor. John Howard reveals the strange thought that stops him having productive conversations with Philip Ruddock. This man is a very big fish. And concerns the Athens Olympic Swimming Centre will not meet IOC standards. Tonight's question on the glass house is what's your favourite smell in the world? Let's get some answers. Mate, what's your favourite smell in the world? Uh, cinnamon. Have you ever just put your whole head in a little jar of cinnamon? Frequently. It's a hard word to say, cinnamon. I'd have to say the smell of money. Yeah, money. Yeah, love Fresh that money. Cash. What's your favourite smell? Leather. Leather, mmm, that's good, isn't it? Oh, mm. What about when you get in a car and it's got leather seats? Oh, it makes you feel so good. You, you could do anything there, couldn't you? Of course. <laughs> um, you smell all right. Oh, it's a new shirt. <laughs> Give it a couple of days, you might agree. I like the uh, smell of perfume on a uh, woman's neck, you know, when you sniff up close to it. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Do you, like, go walk up to strange women you don't know and just sniff them? No, oh, you can stand behind them a little bit. Like yeah, just, just go into the back of their neck, you know. Yeah. Just as they pass by. Yeah, that's not wrong, is it? Yeah, it's not wrong. You shouldn't get arrested for that. Not at all. Roses. Oh, that's beautiful. Does, does your loved one ever get you roses? He does, often. Oh, and you deserve them too. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I have to say sex. Sex? Yeah, the, the smell, smell of sex. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. Cheers. <laughs> all right, excellent. That's a uh, good smell, isn't it? <laughs> Right. You smelled it lately? <laughs> In great news, 
the nostrils. 2,000 residents of Battle Mountain, Nevada, recently bared their armpits with pride for the town's second annual festival of the pit. It all started a couple of years ago after a reporter dubbed Battle Mountain the armpit of America. Thank God he didn't call it the arsehole of America. <laughs> Festivities included a deodorant tossing competition and an armpit beauty contest. There was also a barbecue pit where a sweaty guy parboiled sausages by sticking them under his arms. No need for onions. And, and an aging hippie showed how you can use your own armpit hairs as cheap portable dental floss. Susie, I'd like your help. Right, I want sure. you. Yeah. <laughs> to be Miss Armpit sure. Festival 2003. Alright, why not? <laughs> I only live once. <laughs> Looks like I've made my... Here I am. Dreams can come true. Um, you're going to be the beauty queen we're going to interview you. First question, Harry Damp Dave. Sure. What's so special about armpits? Uh, oh, a lot special about an armpit. I mean, it's bloody, you know, it's, uh, it's you know, it's, I, I just love them. <laughs> They're under your arms. And I like their deepness. I like, think, I like the fact that you can put stuff in them. Like, like what? what? Pens. <laughs> You know, a lot, a lot of these states, a lot of these states have like you know, uh, bumper stickers like Victoria's the Garden State mm. or South Australia's the Festival mm. State. Like, what's on the uh, little car bumper sticker for uh, your home in Nevada? Uh, it's the uh, armpit state. <laughs> yeah, we're not deep thinkers. <laughs> You know, you know when you get that sweat, you know, and you're wearing a good shirt. Oh yeah, is yeah. That, is that good armpit etiquette yeah. or bad? Yeah, no, it's good armpit. That sweat is the uh, the armpit crying. Oh. It's saying, free me from this cloth. <laughs> I want to see the sun. <laughs> Take your shirt off and I'll put your arms up and show me to the world. <laughs> What's the worst thing that can happen at an armpit beauty contest? Uh, the, uh, the worst thing would be if someone uh, poured petrol on themselves and set themselves alight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there any other bits of your body that you like would like to celebrate? Any other uh, part yeah, of the armpit? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm not just armpits. <laughs> I, my, my left foot. In, the, in between the, the big toe and the, the, the second big toe. That's somewhere where you'd like to be, Corinne. What's, what's that?
Once upon a time in a house near Fountain Gate, there lived a lady called Kath who was looking for a mate. Yes, I am high maintenance, but I think you gotta be. He carried a man bag and his name was Kel. Where was I, Foxy Mum? But then Kimmy arrived and made life hell. <laughs> oh, left Brett. Hmm, again. Kimmy, do you like sausages? Well, hello. Welcome to the It's grapeable. Now you're off the toot paper. You're chooky. Oh, yeah, they're nice. Yeah, they're nice. They're unusual. unusual. You've got to lose a lot of weight. Two sweet, please. <laughs> Kath and Kim. Look at me, Kim. Look at me. Look at me. Returns 8.30 Thursday, ABC. <laughs> Same yeah, colour How come you've got two different groups? We've got nine different nine. groups. Nine different yeah, groups? Yeah, we're splitting up into nine different groups. Yeah. Oh, 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 or small groups looking with their own individual expectations and then they have their various experiences and they don't really unite as an audience until they're upstairs in the gallery, we thought. And then we can have them seeing a pattern there and it can start to come to life in a, a different way. How could we make it so the audience just keep moving, they never have to backtrack? Yes. Well, they can go through. I hope the whole building will be alive with music. And that the old people themselves will be kind of inhabiting this building very comfortably. You know, what we want to avoid utterly, utterly, utterly is nostalgia. You know, we don't want to trip down memory, memory lane. And so many projects with old people or for old people kind of take that tack. Um, and that's not at all what we want. We want the, the, the people to kind of be there with all the experience they've accumulated through the years. But we want them to be there now and to be doing a work of theatre which is a contemporary work of theatre, you know, which is, you know, right there, which wouldn't be kind of out of place in a contemporary art space. For the next hour, we're going to try and work out what to do with right this conversation <laughs> <laughs> somehow. Yes, yes. So if you get to recording, uh, we'll just, if that's where you, you, are you happy sitting there? Yes. Oh, you've got right. Carlo 
was suggesting that very soft, just tuning up together. It sounds beautiful when, when you're actually playing just single notes together. Very, if you just play that note, you play it too. Just play it together a few times. To me, it's an uh, interesting experiment to, to see how uh, you hadn't practiced before and then you're just sitting down and playing whatever you, you want to play and to having to, uh, to express yourself. Uh, it's like questions and answers, you know, like two people are talking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. On the other side there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See if it's all board, yeah, but seven thousand key chains. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the uh, the DJs and their instrumental hit, Great Flight. Ah, oh. Peter Johnny was magic live. High on a mountain looking down on the way I feel is a door. I was a guitarist with the DJs and one of the things we did was Six O'Clock Rock, the only live show in Australia at that time. Apart from Six O'Clock Rock and stadium shows, we had a pretty busy weekly schedule because we had seven dances and then there were festival recording sessions and there was an ABC radio show called Rockville Junction. So altogether the band was doing about seven gigs, uh, seven dances and two or three gigs a week. Just say hello to the lady. Hello to the lady. No, just say hello. Hello. Now come on, Lulu. I want you to see a little song for the, the little uh, the lady gentleman. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to see a little song called Little Sir Echo. Are you ready? Just get it. Echo! Echo! <laughs> How are you? How are you? Okay. Little Sir Echo, how do you do? Hello. So what we're going to do is, for part of the show, when the audience first comes here, it'll be dark. It, it, they won't necessarily know what's happening, and they might go, they'll be encouraged through lighting and maybe maybe the help of some performers. Oh, the audience is in the dark, are they? <laughs> <laughs> can you, can you get... Hello there! Hello there! Hello! How are you? What are you doing down there? <laughs> oh, he's, up there. he's up there, you're here. Yeah, I forget. What about listening to your heartbeat? Can you listen to your heartbeat? Heartbeat. I started off in uh, the Tudor War. <laughs> oh, Tudor War. My father had a Chinese restaurant down at uh, Campbell Street, opposite Tibley. You know the theatre? The up the Tibley? And that's where the show business people used to come out to walk over the road and have a Chinese meal. That's why I met all these sort of stars and didn't meet any big chuliquists, but I met uh, magicians and uh, singers, multi-instrumentalists. But the, the person who got me started on being chulik was a chap called George Hicks. He was a travelling salesman. He travelled in ladies' underwear. He didn't uh, wear them, he just had a sold underwear. Anyway, he hit a doll, uh, he, he bought the, the doll shop, and he used to make the doll talk. and. The, I was always fascinated with the doll. My dad used to say, oh, look, the doll's talking, you know. And I wanted to teach me how to do it. And he said, no, I can't teach. He said, yeah, you know, just trade secrets. And that's how we, I first was fascinated by the dolls, you know. So what we do 
he's doing B flat. He's going. It's, it's modal, so he's going to be B flat. Oh right. You're going to be and in D major. Yeah. So it'll oh, be quite right. nice. Mm. Yeah. I've never done anything. Right. like a bit of a free thing, isn't Very it? Very free. We've got four singers singing songs, and it'll be like, oh, if, for today I'll cue when you come in, but you'll learn the piece, yeah. and we'll just say, okay, you just do a little backing here, support. Yes, so, well, the best shot would be to hear the song, wouldn't it? Well, the songs you'll know, yeah? Right. Go with me. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> this, is, this is on the fly in real time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to hear the song too, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Quite minimal and sparse. Yeah, you know, yes. it's very melodically. I think more yes. melodically in the, on the double bass up in the high register. Yeah. Yes. This project is about process, and one of the things that's always happened when I, in the early days when I was trying to find people, is I had so much difficulty trying to say what it was because I didn't know what it was. And it was like you just have to jump in and just trust the process and you will get an outcome because you, you're relying on the creative experience.